lady. And, uh, and, um, and that, after that day, I just remember distinctly Irene seeing the camera and not interacting with it. Mm. Where she was, because so, she would call it my little camera. She would, she would all have all these nicknames for the camera. Like, what's a cannon? A cannon is you shoot people. It's not a can, you know, it's not a nice thing. What's a cannon? Um, so it, it's, uh, when she stopped paying attention, I, in the edit room, I was like, oh, the film can't go beyond 2006. It can't go beyond that moment when she stops recognizing mm. what we're doing because that, that feels icky to me. And it feels, um, it's about Irene's dignity and how do we maintain it? And I don't think, um, I, I think that, um, yeah, it was almost like I, I didn't, I, the film didn't have my permission nor Irene's permission to go any further than that, which, um, which I'm glad for, because I think we do use some moments in from some audio from 2010 and as we're constructing the, the relationship, but, um, but we didn't use any, any of the, the visuals. And tell me about the, the, the decision to, to spend time in Cuba and to go to Cuba, because that's beautiful. I mean, really beautiful. And, and the relationship with her family, you get a very different Irene in Cuba and the things that, you know, that, 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 that she remembers before you go to Cuba. And of course the, the poignancy of her being in, in Miami with her sister Carmen Newt and having forgotten that she was in Cuba so, so recently. So talk us through some of the decisions that you made in terms of the material that you featured in the film from, from the time you spent together in Cuba. Well, we, you know, we decided to go to Cuba because um, Irene was remembering more and more, was living her, more and more in Cuba in her head. And, um, and she was getting letters from her brother. Um, and, and, the, and, and her sister was calling from Miami and she was getting these letters from her brother. And her last play that she had done was called Letters from Cuba that was based on letters from her brother. And so um, when we got some money, we got, um, a, a, our executive producer came on board and gave us um, a grant. And I was like, well, what are we gonna do with this money? And, um, and it became immediately clear that we should try to go to Cuba. But we couldn't get, I, you know, I did all the paperwork and we couldn't get Irene a, a visa and I couldn't get a visa. And so we went and we, we had heard about this guy in, in California who was getting artists to Cuba. And, um, and we ended up going as, um, as Buddhist, uh, on a Buddhist religious mission. And so we all were Buddhists. And so, um, and, and, uh, and we flew through Miami and we actually flew direct to, uh, to Cuba. And that was in 2004, which was kind of unheard of. So um, I have a very funny story about the Buddhists, but I, I'll, I'll save it. Um, because trying to tell Irene that we're, we're, you have to tell the customs people that we're Buddhists. And it was a whole ordeal. But, um, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, it was, uh, yeah. But, um, but we made it, we made it there. And, um, and, you know, it was, it, it was the, the most, amazing two weeks of my entire life. I mean, to this day, it is the thing that um, I'm, uh, it was the trip that, that changed the way I saw the world and the way I saw, you know, everything. And the way I saw Irene, because she completely transforms and turns, turned into this, um, I mean, I, I think in, in I'll, I'll say that I think in New York, it was becoming really hard. And one of our decisions to go to Cuba was that she was so alone in New York and that her family was really missing her and wanting to see her and worried about her, mm -hmm. you know, in, in Cuba and Miami. And so um, that was our main motivation was to kind of take her home to her family. But, um, but I will say that like in New York too, at that time when she'd go out, we'd go out to see plays or something and people would see her and they'd know that she had um, some form of dementia and they would, you know, hold her hand and they'd be like, oh, Irene, how are you doing? And, you know, it's, oh, how are you, you know, so, so somber. And Irene would be like, what's wrong with these people? Like, why are they treating me like this? And then, you know, she would often also loop when she was trying to um, talk about what she was working on or, you know, because she had to sort of make up these things. 
So it was hard, harder and harder for her to be in New York in a lot of ways. And so in Cuba, she didn't have to be a famous playwright. She didn't have to be a playwright. She didn't have to be anybody but a sister, an aunt, a, a Cuban, um, you know, a, a, an artist. You know, I mean, she knew she was still, you know, a playwright, and an artist, but it wasn't like her identity that she didn't have to prove anything. She just had to be loved. You know, and she, she, you know, she loved her family. So there was something, um, and being a part of that too, we had all these grandiose plans of, we filmed Letters from Cuba on rooftops. We, we translated it back to Spanish from the English and we had, or from the Spanish, the, I don't even know how we translated it, but we had um, Irene's brother throwing his letters off the balcony and Irene trying to catch them. And um, we had these like, amazing Cuban actors and um, and all of that stuff didn't make it into the film but um, but we really wanted to just be in the moment with her I mean I think that's what it came down to it's like what do we show from Cuba and I wanted to show so much but it was just like okay what are the moments that that mattered the most so when also when they're forgotten it matters the most you know so I think that um, yeah, and, and just being in the moment. Be, like you wanted to feel like you were with Irene in Cuba, which is how, and that, that joyfulness that we felt when we were with her. People were following us down the streets, with, you know, and dancing with her. And they were like, why are you filming her, you know? So it was amazing. What, what did Irene think of the film? How much of the film did she see? Um, and, and what did she think of it? Well, she saw, you know, over the years we did, you know, I. I I hadn't necessarily finished it, but I would do these like 20 minute samples for grants or 15 minute samples. And she came in for her birthday um, in 2010 for the Fornas Festival that was happening. And she's actually stayed with me. And, um, and I was able to show her 25 minutes, which we actually screened the next night. Um, and I showed it to her before it screened so I could, cut out anything that she hated or, you know. Um, and her, her reaction, I just remember her saying, you know, and I put, you know, in that 25 minutes was a lot of um, the scenes that I was concerned about, like the scene of her writing, you know, loss of me, loss of memory, and um, the scene in the elevator where she's, you know, saying that she's been forgotten. I just wanted her to see those things. And, you know, her reaction, she laughed through most of it. And, and then, you know, she said, loss of memory. I never, you know, I, I didn't lose it. I never had it to begin with. Yeah. And, um, and then her, her, her biggest critique was that there were too many other people in the film. That she just <laughs> wanted to see her. Um, she was just like, enough with the people talking about me. I want to see me. More me. <laughs> Um, so, and she, she loved it. She was just like, oh, there's me again. There's me again. Oh, here I am again. Um, so I think she would have, um, I, you know, when we were at, at MoMA where the film premiered, um, I, I mean, everyone was on their feet and they were, and Irene, I just so wish that Irene could have been up there. You know, it was just, I mean, that's the saddest part of like, the, you know, it's extraordinary that the film is having this life and is continuing to have a life. Um, uh, but I just so wish that Irene could have been part of it because she would have been so delighted, you know, and the party afterward, you know, it's just like, I just could have imagined, you know, I could, you know but I, I you know. loved a good party, did Irene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Tell me, I mean, the other thing that emerges, Irene, she hated labels, but she was a really, um, I mean, she was she she was a very political person in many many ways, and, I, and one of the things that took me back to that was that moment where she uh, is talking about uh, her youth and people making catcalls uh, when when she was young and put it, pulling ugly faces so they wouldn't do that, and then she turns to you and says, "Do they still do that?" And she's disapproving. And of course, there's also the section where she's talking about um, LGBTQ issues in Cuba and why it's just not possible, or wasn't possible for her to talk about that openly. So there's also this, you know, incredibly political um, human being that Irene was um, in, in many, many ways. And, and you capture those political moments, I think, with great sensitivity. Yeah, I mean, I think there, there, um, 
surprising to me. And, you know, I mean, the, the moment in Cuba where she's talking about gay rights or, you know, whether or not she would have, you know, it, 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 whether if she was out to her family, um, you know, it's, I, I mean, that, I, and people have said to me that, like, that's the, the most they've ever heard her talk about that, um, you know, or that, 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 that they'd never, you know, read anything like that, that she'd, she'd said. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, I, she's a very political person, but not, you know, but it's so, it's, it's, it's never, over, you know, it never is dogmatic and it's never, you know, it's, it's just, it's just a part of who she is. And I think she's, you know, she knew that she, she said, if I, you know, if I had grown up in Cuba, I would have never been a playwright. Um, and, uh, you know, I mean, she knew that, like, um, that coming to New York was the, you know, probably, you know, saved her in a lot of ways, you know, from, from having to, to deal with, from, you know, who knows if she would have even come out had she stayed in Cuba, you know, I don't know. I mean, I think, um, because she wasn't also very out in her life in terms of, like, you know, I mean, that was, she was very private in yeah. a sense, yeah, so. Um, and she's very candid in the film. She's very candid about Susan Sontag and her relationship with Susan Sontag. Um, and she talked about it, she talked about it to me, but, but never as candidly as, as, as in the film. And it's a very moving moment when she talks about her as the love of her life. Yeah, and that came out of nowhere. I mean, that came out of, um, because I had been asking Irene, because she's so private, you know, and I, I, of course, like everyone's curious about Susan and, you know, and I had become very close with Harriet, who's also in the film and was Irene's, you know, an early lover of Irene's. And, um, and, and uh, Irene would never talk about Susan. She would talk about anybody else, but she would never talk about Susan. And, um, and of course, you know, we're at the loudest, we're in a cafe in Cuba and it's the loudest cafe. And the camera person is like out on, the, you know, in his speedo on the beach. And I'm just there with Irene and she has this memory. I mean, she, you know, circuitously, we get to this memory of her, you know, meeting Susan Sontag. And that came out of nowhere. And I was just like not prepared at all. And it's to the backdrop and because maybe it's because of the backdrop, because it was this famous Mexican love song that was playing that was very emotional. And, you know, like the music could have just taken her there. Who knows what, you know, what came first, but, um, but yeah, and then that was it. That was the first and last time she ever talked to me about Susan. And um, that actually, that monologue goes on longer and it's actually, a, a, it was published at Harper's a while ago of her talking, you know, at the, the full, because she goes on, you know, about Susan in, in you know, really beautiful ways. Um, but, you know, and people will ask, like, why didn't you, um, why was it cut off there? Like, why don't you go, it just, it, it's a memory and then it, then the water comes and flushes it away. And, um, and we said, well, if, if we extended that moment, it would be us commenting. Or it would be, you know, I never interviewed Sontag. She actually did not want to be interviewed. We tried. And, um, and you know, I, I didn't want to impose anything. I thought it was just perfect the way that Irene said it. Like, let Irene have the last word, you know? We learned over and over that if she didn't have the last word, it, we would end up having to take it out anyway. 